All right. The first time I saw you guys since the second scrimmage, you know, I think overall uh, we got a lot accomplished. I think we had uh, really uh, great competition there. I think we've got some positions where things are sorting out to some degree. Uh, but really a lot of good film for us to not only evaluate, but for the players to continue to learn, uh, improve, uh, and make progress. So uh, yesterday we had an extensive walkthrough. We watched the video. Uh, and today we'll kind of move into a little bit different mode relative to actual classes starting today. I thought there was some uh, things that we need to improve at. Overall, the body language, the mental toughness of the team was not up to standard. Um, I didn't think we handled the heat and humidity very well. We went a little bit earlier uh, in the day. And we tried to really define those for the guys yesterday what mental toughness is. And we, we kind of say that that's being at your best regardless of the circumstance. Um, so when you do get presented with some adversity, uh, we can respond the right way. But yesterday was about recovery. Uh, and really the message for our football team is we need to focus on details. We've got to improve our sense of urgency relative to attention to detail. And we have to make fundamental improvement. Um, and I think that would apply across the board. Um, we ask each individual player on the team what they need to do to make improvement, what do they need to do to help the team. And uh, that's kind of where we're going to turn our focus. Today is the first day of classes for our players. Uh, and we kind of transition into that uh, mode. So with that being said, we, we are two weeks away, you know, to some degree, a little less than two weeks away, and uh, we've got a few th more things to teach, but we're, we'll kind of flip the script on Wednesday and turn our attention to grandma. What are some of those positions that are starting to become uh, I think that we are – we're settling in at receiver. You know, I think both outside receivers are pretty settled. I think uh, running back, we kind of know um, who we can feature there. We know what receivers we can feature. We know where we're at from a tight end perspective. I think Alex Allen is a guy who uh, has surfaced uh, as kind of that third H-back role. You know, he's a guy that's really worked really hard and proved himself. Um, Offensive line-wise, you know, I feel good about those seven or eight players. Uh, and then I think def defensively, it's exactly where we were at going into the scrimmage. We feel no differently. We still have some really competitive spots at corner. We've got some competitive spots in that second and third defensive line. Um, the inside backer group is deep. We've got plenty of guys that are game ready. And then we're starting to see some guys really make progress at outside backer that I think is – a positive. So we're, we're where we need to be relative to uh, having enough depth. You know, there are some positions on the team where we can't afford to get injured, but um, I like where we're at. Were they sloppy? Were they turning the ball over? What, uh, why, how did you come to the conclusion that they were uh, lacking? Well, I think overall we're assignment sound. You know, I think we know what to do. Um, I think that, that just the attention to detail that will come with narrowing down a game plan, I guess I would say. You know, the number of concepts that we're carrying, the variables that we have on both sides of the ball. Um, just in general, our overall approach is not up to standard. It's not championship level. When I'm talking about, um, you know, the elite, you know, and I, I think that they understand that. Those little things add up. You know, I think the scrimmage was a product of that. A lot of good for both first units. You know, I mean, really, and that's what you like to see, um, you know, is both of your first units to have some success. And then it was relatively competitive once we did go good on good. So, uh, but in general, you know, that's where we need to go a step further to be game ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I think we've got, I mean, that's the, this is the one that is probably the most competitive, in my opinion, you know, relative to um, both guys having effective, have been very effective. You know, both guys have shown that we can operate at full um, 
you know, all cylinders firing with both those guys in the game. I think that we're a couple of days away from that. You know, we've still got two practices here where it's going to be kind of in training camp mode where it's going to be very competitive and give those guys an opportunity to continue to try to separate themselves. But we're not ready to name a starter yet for sure. Say it again. I don't know that you could say that. I mean, there's, there's, when you go back and watch the tape, both did a lot of things well. Both made some mistakes. So, um, you know, we're, we're not ready to make a statement relative to which guy's going to start the game, which guy practiced better or played better. Um, we're going to evaluate the total body of work. Um, and I think that the good thing is we got two good players that have the respect of their teammates. And if we had to put either one of them out there, I'd be okay with it. At least in here, it seems the quarterbacks have two very different personalities. I don't know if it's broken and Levi is not always confident or shy or whatever it is. How does that translate on the field? Or does, I mean, is Andre a little bit more outspoken on the field, more comfortable with his teammates? Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there's definitely some differences there from a personality standpoint. And certainly you can, in general, when you observe those guys in this setting, you can see that. But when it comes to effectiveness, you know, relative to affecting their teammates, um, communicating what we're trying to get done on offense, I think both are really good at it. So, um, you know, we all have got different strengths and weaknesses and certainly – both these guys are leaders in different ways, you know, and I think they both can be very effective quarterbacks going about it maybe a little bit different way. Are there any uh, newcomers on the defensive line that are separating themselves for playing time? Uh, I do think that, um, you know, McDowell obviously has been rotating with the ones and twos. He's the mid-year player that we acquired from Ole Miss. Um, Masri Mayhew, Tamaji Porter, you know, those are the guys that are in competition for that second nose spot. Um, you know, and then you've got some competition with some veteran players, you know, Zion Hill, Trevante Booker. Um, you know, we have a young man named Malcolm Rollins that's a walk-on that has done a really good job in training camp and has provided us a lot of, has taken a lot of reps, done a really good job for our football team. Uh, we still have Sammy Ochoa is battling a hip issue, you know, and he's been out for quite a bit here. So we're still trying to get him back up to speed so we can evaluate him further. Did you come out Saturday helping? We did. We did. And that was probably walking off the field uh, because it was very physical and there was a, it was a high volume of play count. Um, you know, I was pleased with that. We got out of there. We really actually were a little bit more banged up after the first scrimmage than we were the second scrimmage. You're from the players. Have you ever heard Coach Ochoa speak before? Was that your first time? What was your reaction? I mean, I, I've got tremendous respect for the for the man. You know, I mean, obviously we know what he's accomplished as a coach. Um, but just in general, what he stands for, what he believes in, uh, his approach in, in terms of his investment in the – the student athlete as a person uh, in trying to equip his guys, you know, for what's going to happen 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. I really admire that. And uh, just a lot of wisdom, you know, a lot of, a lot of experience. And, um, you know, I think he, he has my utmost respect. What's the new schedule this week? Right. Well, we kind of switch, we change modes here a little bit. We add 20 players to the roster, so we'll be at max capacity. Um, we are, we're going to start moving towards some opponent prep, not necessarily the teams that we play first in the year, but, you know, teams that we play throughout the year that present concepts that are different than what we practice against every day. Um, so maybe an offense that runs triple option, maybe it's uh, – uh, heavy 12 personnel, uh, you know, zone read team, whatever the case may be. Uh, offensively, we're going to work on the, maybe the different pressures that we'll see throughout the year that may create problems for us. And we take that time to introduce the scout team concept, the look team concept, how we administer that, how we organize that, uh, the tempo and the expectation of those drills. So it's that time of the year, and, and we use these two days here to do that. We will transition to Grambling 
on uh, Wednesday. It will basically be an in-season Sunday routine. You know, so um, Thursday our players will be off. We will have some team events that day that won't be football. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're, we're in that first day of class mode here where we start uh, moving toward preparing for that opener. Was the Washington Mitchell able to be effective during the tournament? He was. He did. He he did play. We did tackle him. He was full contact, and he did well, and he came out healthy. So, very pleased with that. Uh, I think it'll be as we approach the opener, and I feel like I'm ready to make that announcement. You know. Um, well, regardless of announcing it to us or announcing it to the world. I, I think that's a very subjective. Thing, you know, and I think I'll know when that time is right. You know, it'll be obvious not only to me and our staff, but to our team. Um, and, you know, hey, we're going to get in the room and, and work our way through it, but we've got a pretty good pulse of where we're at at that position and within our football team. You're expanding the roster, and so one of the guys you get back is Sam. Where is he at health wise? Do you second to maybe factor in some grambling, or is he further out down the road? That's a great question, and that's one of the areas with our team that, you know, we've tried multiple players, and certainly in spring he proved to be a very effective guy, a lot of consistency there, a very stable, great competitor, tough guy, great ball skills, uh, and he will participate today, you know, kind of a go-as-can um, approach. So he, he was with our team during training camp, you know, rehabbing, Obviously, couldn't go to the meetings, couldn't participate in practice, but he was around. And, um, you know, he's been making progress in his rehab process, and he's ready to do some things with the team today. We are able to look on third down conversions and the three minutes and four minutes the first two minutes of the minimum. Well, we had a good day with the first offense, and we had a good day with the first defense. You know, I think the numbers reflect that. We met both our goals with both those groups, but obviously, you, you, are not satisfied with the, the twos on both sides of the ball. But uh, we, we did some second and ten play third work as a situation within the scrimmage, and we also had obviously a number of third downs show up, show up throughout. So uh, good by the first units, and, you know, we'd like better out of the second group.